This might come as a surprise coming from a climate scientist, but I actually love carbon dioxide. You see, carbon dioxide occurs naturally in the atmosphere, and without it, the planet would be way too cold for comfort. Plus, plants wouldn't have any food to eat. In one way or another, pretty much every life form on Earth depends on CO2. So then why are you always criticizing CO2? The problem is that we've increased carbon dioxide to levels not seen for millions of years by burning fossil fuels and chopping down forests, all of which has, surprise, surprise, caused the climate to change at unprecedented rates. Is that all? Is that all? This causes huge rises in food insecurity, extreme weather events, sea level rise. Is that all? Yeah, no, I get that all of that is super serious, but it's just that you said that CO2 is this really important molecule, and not just for the climate. Well, yeah, that's right. So emitting huge amounts of it should also have lots of impacts, and not just for the climate. Okay, I get what you're saying. And yes, there are non-climate related harms to carbon dioxide, so let's talk about them. Let's start with the one that you've probably already heard of, ocean acidification. The more carbon dioxide we emit, the more gets dissolved in our oceans, and this makes the oceans more acidic. And just like when I'm working in a toxic environment and it makes me more fragile... Adam, I think you might have forgotten to add the spreadsheet to your latest email. Stop cyberbullying me, Nenifer! The toxic environment of ocean acidification makes the shells and skeletons of many organisms more fragile, whether that's crabs, krill, or coral. And speaking of coral, if you haven't already, make sure to watch the video I made for Planet A, all about what we're doing to the world's coral reefs and what we could do to save them. Ocean acidification is changing a host of processes in our seas. For example, how certain organisms reproduce. It could even change how sound travels underwater, potentially affecting how organisms like whales can find their way and communicate. Okay, sure, but what if I don't care about all these ocean species? Well, why not? My step-grandfather-in-law was actually killed by a krill. I am so sorry for your loss. But what happens in our oceans doesn't stay in our oceans. Billions of people around the world depend on healthy seas for everything from food to protection from incoming storms. But animals, including us, actually breathe out CO2. So does changing the concentrations of it in the atmosphere have any direct effect on us? It absolutely does. If carbon dioxide were extremely highly concentrated in the air we breathe, that could actually be dangerous for us. But fortunately, we are not going to see concentrations anywhere near this high in the atmosphere. Well, that's a relief. Unfortunately, what's much more likely is that carbon dioxide levels could make us stupid. Stupid er. Yeah. Exactly. There is evidence that the carbon dioxide levels in the air we breathe a few decades from now could have impacts on our ability to think. That's right, we're not just emitting carbon dioxide because we're stupid. Emitting carbon dioxide could also make us stupid. That sounds kind of terrifying. It really is. And if you want to see the effects of extremely high carbon dioxide levels on our ability to think, well, don't try it at home. But fortunately, you don't have to because my friend Curtis Bowdy sealed himself in a box to see just how stupid he became. You can watch his video over here. Okay, but it kind of makes sense that more CO2 in the air would make us stupider, seeing as we are trying to get rid of CO2 from our bodies. But you already mentioned that CO2 is plant food, so should all this extra CO2 make plants 
smarter? Well, not smarter, but greener. Satellite imagery has shown that the entire planet has become greener as the increased CO2 levels in our atmosphere have allowed plants to photosynthesize more. So could this extra CO2 be enough to re-green the plants behind you? On this channel, we do not speak ill of the dead. Wait, but this greening sounds kind of like good news. Well, it sounds like good news because it kinda is. Kinda. You see, this added greenness allows plants to absorb more carbon dioxide, as well as helping keep the surface of the planet cool. But this silver lining, or I guess I should say green lining, has its limits. It's nowhere near enough to offset the huge effects of the vast amounts of greenhouse gases that we're emitting. But right at the beginning of this video, you said that climate change causes huge rises in food insecurity. Wouldn't all this extra green mean extra food too? Well, this greening isn't the only effect at play. For one, even if carbon dioxide did indeed increase the productivity of plants, there's evidence it would actually decrease their contents of certain key nutrients like protein, iron and zinc. And overfeeding plants carbon dioxide would have other concerning effects too, from thicker leaves to changing how plants exhale water vapour. All of these things don't just affect plants, they also affect how plants absorb carbon dioxide and interact with the climate. Okay, so more plant food doesn't just mean more happier plants. No, that is it. I cannot keep doing this. I cannot and I will not. You can't keep doing what? I can't keep talking about not climate change. We can't talk about the effect of carbon dioxide on plants without talking about the effect of climate change on plants. Changing climate conditions and extreme weather events will likely be more than enough to offset any of the positive, positive effects of planetary greening. So you're saying that the climate effects of CO2 are worse than the non-climate effects of CO2? I'm saying it doesn't make sense to separate them. It doesn't make sense to talk about ocean acidification without also talking about ocean heat waves, which are caused by a change climate. It doesn't make sense to talk about carbon dioxide's effects on our cognition without talking about climate change's very real effect on our physical and mental health. And that is not all that doesn't make sense. I'm scared to ask. You don't need to ask because I am on a roll. It also doesn't make sense to separate these effects of carbon dioxide from the effects of other gases that we emit alongside it. For example, the millions of premature deaths caused by air pollution every single year, or the terrible heating effects of all the methane we're emitting. It also doesn't make sense to separate all of this from the other environmental damage that we're causing, for example, from deforestation or the harm to bees and other pollinators. The thing is, it makes sense to talk about all these non-climate related harms of carbon dioxide, not because they're separate from the climate related harms, but because they're interlinked with them. And you know what? What? That means that our work to protect planet, plants, animals, and ourselves, that work needs to be interlinked too. Okay, so this was a slightly ranty way to start 2022, but I have loads of projects I am really excited to share with you later this year. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you're subscribed, that you like, comment, share, all that good stuff for the algorithm, and I will see you next time. Okay, until then, by destroying ecosystems or something else that I've forgotten, damn it.